What's up, YouTube guys? Trinity here with Mike and Granny. And today we're gonna be tuning in for another chapter of the Bible, some more Bible study. All right, we're gonna start at chap uh, Genesis chapter 17, and it reads, "And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me." and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruit, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh is his foreskin is not circumcised that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall they shall, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah, that is 90 years old, bear? And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. 
but my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. And he left off talking with him. And God went up from Abraham. And Abraham took Ishmael his son, and all that were born in his house, and all that were bought with his money. Every male among the men in, of Abraham's house, and circumcised the flesh of their foreskin in the self same day, as God had said unto him. And Abraham was ninety years old and nine when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. And Ishmael his son was thirteen years old when he was circumcised in the flesh of his foreskin. In the self same day was Abraham circumcised and Ishmael his son. And all the men of his house born in the house and bought with money for the stranger were circumcised with him. That's the end of chapter 17. So what should I took out of that chapter? What should you have? Hmm? You said what should you have taken out of that chapter? No, I'm saying what did you take out of that chapter? Oh, I, um, wow, I took this out. Remember we were saying God had already told Abraham and Abra Abram and Sarai that he was going to bless them with a child. Mm -hmm. And um, then in the next chapter, Sarai went ahead and she she didn't she didn't trust God. She didn't have faith in God to do what he already said he was going to bless them with a child from their own bowels. So um so now here we are God back with them, telling him he's going to bless them with a child of their own bowels. And here Abra, Abram is, God done blessed them again, even though he don't have faith right there. Mm -hmm. He done blessed them again. He says, um, I'm, you're no longer Abram. I'm, I, you've been elevated. You, I've chosen you, and I've elevated you. Your new name, your brand new name. Your new name is no longer. Your name is no longer Abram. You're gonna be a father of the nations. Your new name is Abraham. So God elevated him, and even though, even though he see, God see his faults and all of that, you know. Yeah. But he's still his servant. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So God saying, I, yeah, you, you're you're my servant. I see you're 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 a diligent servant. You have weaknesses, but I'm still going. You're still my chosen son. I'm still going to elevate you. I'm still going to make you the, give you the promise that I promised to you. Yeah. So, and this is what I get out of it that. God is a forgiving God. He see our weaknesses, but he see how diligently we're seeking him daily. We're still seeking after him daily. We yeah. have faults. We're going to, um, you know, because we're man, we can't, we don't understand God's power. Yeah. We don't understand that, you know, I'm, I'm a 90 year old man and my wife, she, she's not having her, um, her monthly you know anymore so how can I see that see, Abraham well Abram start laughing when God told him this time next year you're gonna you're gonna have a son his name gonna be Isaac I, I say, Abraham Abram Abram just laughed because he like Lord my wife can't even get a baby yeah. At this point, you know, mm -hmm. she she had not ha ever had a child. Now she ninety nine years old. Where this baby coming from? He went back to Ishmael. Yeah. He went back. <laughs> so, what I get out of it is that 
when God talk to us and, and give us a promise, tell us he's going to do something in our life, it don't matter what the situation is with us. God is our creator. Anything he make a promise to us for, he's going to he's gonna do that. Mm -hmm. We don't have to make no provision for God. We don't have to help God out with nothing. All we need to do is pray. When, you know, when, when we know somebody is um, a family member or something is on drugs and, and they have a bad habit of drugs and cigarettes or whatever that um, weakness they may be in the family, we need to get on our knees and pray. And the Bible says sometimes we need to fast and pray. Yeah. So then we we got to give up some things. Stop stop doing some things, you know, that we like to do in our life. Give it up for a period of time and focus on this this person. And yeah. even when it comes to ourselves, you know, give up some things and pray when we pray for ourselves to to you know to, to be um, delivered from some weakness that we may have. You know, we yeah. we need to do that. And so most of our uh, take out of this is just how patient God is with mm -hmm. um with people and especially he patient with them after, you know, you say in a time on God's bless you. I already know God go bless you. It's like who do you think that you are to set the time on? God you gotta do it by this time. Right. And nothing gonna get done on your time, it's gonna get done on Amen. his time because that's the only way that it, um you know everything properly fleshes out, you don't gotta worry about no um side effects and all that other stuff you know by trying to rush it like i said in the last podcast with hagar and uh sarah that whole situation that all stemmed from just disobedience right and you got to learn that god has simple instructions it don't matter how dire the situation is if god say he gonna do something he gonna do something and you you should never you should never not only just doubt him Amen. but you should never you know try to go past his time and you know, give him a timer on anything. Cause yeah. one thing about God, he, he's never late. God, he gonna do it on his time. That's appropriate for your situation. Amen, amen. Cause he, he come to us in our, in our time of need. And we need to understand that God created us and he know when and where and what we need. Mm -hmm. It's not about, like you say, our selfishness, what we want in our time. You, we don't have a time. We didn't create create ourselves. Nope. We didn't create ourselves, and so um, and something else that I um took from out of this um while you know you was reading is. No matter how far you you like you stray along, God can still bless you. He still will bless you because it's just all a part of His plan. Like mm -hmm. you know, even after all that stuff had happened, they had lost faith. Um, you know, what's his name? Abram laughing and stuff like that. Uh, even throughout all of that, the doubt, He's still gonna give you that same blessing because you know God could just said, you "Know what? All right, then." After they had went out and um stepped out of you know. Oh, yeah. I stepped out of that feather. All right, now y'all can just do it y'all way, and then y'all gonna see what that comes out of. Right. And you know they they did get some of that side effect, but you know um, God being not only just patient but forgiving, He always just gonna come back to you no matter what type of situation you in, no matter what you've done. He's still always just gonna come back and uh, deliver you no matter what. Right. The thing is, you just gotta be in a position inside your mental state to accept the deliverance and not mess up what he has going on for you. Right. Because at the end of the day, we all got choice. And if that's an option, some people would choose the option to, you know, break everything back down mm -hmm. just so they can, um, you know, live that old life or whatever. Right. And that just happens. And that just goes to show that he always going to give you a choice. Are you like, put it to the test. Do you want to keep on living this sin? Right. He going to put you in a position where, you know, it's less likely to happen and just depending on what you choose, that's wherever your soul go, whatever you, whatever you chose. Exactly. And that way, you know, God won't ever have no regrets because he looks out, of, he looks out for us right. repeatedly every single day. So it's just, it all just comes up to your choice and that's what God gives us. And the thing is, if you don't have the 10 commandments instilled, you don't read the Bible, 
um, you you gonna be you gonna make a lesser informed choice, and more than likely you not you not you don't have all these values. You are gonna choose wrong. Exactly. So at the end of the day, like you can't like when it's time, you can't be mad and say, oh this 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 and that. You know when you're thrown into the lake of fire, be mad at God because you have more than enough time, more than enough chances, more than enough everything, more more than enough wake up calls to know I'm finished. Right. Right. And that's just how I feel. That's and I understand that because um, I'm looking at um, you know how they 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 were living like day to day life like just like we do, but they were um, they had the altar where they had the you know when they repented of their sins. Well, they didn't do like we do, just go on their knees and pray. Mm -hmm. They had um, the scapegoat. They had to take the sacrifice, the animal sacrifice, yeah. and do the whole ritual thing. So they were doing that. And not only that, they were praying and they were, you know, observing the Sabbath. But just think about it. This stuff you do every day, every day, just like when you get up and we pray every day. And then we go through our day and we think about God the next time we pray. But are we talking to God throughout the day? You know? Yeah. What you just talking about outside of prayer? Yeah, outside of prayer. You know, like when we when we yeah. going through our day. I know when I go through my day, I still be talking to the Lord. You know, like yeah. it's just a connection. You just have that connection when you it's a yeah and, that, yeah, and that grows for you to do that, especially when you know that you're praying a lot, because then you know uh, where all your strength come from. Right. You go through a certain situation, you just pray, and then he's going to take you directly out of that situation. Exactly. And something that's real um, amazing to me is us praying three times a day is just like um, Abram and Sarah, how they was doing their little um, sacrifices. We do that because it's the same effect either way. Right. So y'all got to realize the importance of it and just how um, easier God made it for us. Right. Because, you know, it's, it's it's nothing to just laying in a bed. You know, you're not doing nothing. You're bored. The least you can do is just do a little short prayer to God just for, um, you know, just for protection and strength throughout the rest of your day. Amen. Because it's, it's literally the easiest thing you can do, especially if you, um, and it's okay to forget, but you just re got to remember to catch yourself yeah. because... Like, like I said, God makes it very easy and accessible for you to have a relationship. You just got to be the one to reach out because he always going to be there. Exactly. Because God is here for us, you know, and, and, and we can't just go through every day, you know, doing a ritual is what my point was, mm -hmm. you know, because Sarah and, and um, Abram. They were doing all these. They were. They had a connection to God somehow. They somehow they um they fell off. You yeah. know, they they lost faith because they thought that that time was was past. There's no way the time has passed, so they didn't have faith in God. God had to come to them and tell them, listen. You're going to have, he done, He already said this. He already told them this, but yet their faith had dwindled because Sarah was past time. And, and so was Abram. Abram's time was past as well. Cause you know, after men live a certain age, they don't, there's no seed there. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is what they think. And after this, because after all these men that got so old, man, they're not producing children, you know? Yeah. So, is God, when God moved, he wasn't moving just to show Sarah and Abram his might and his power. He was showing everybody in the camp, you know? Yeah. Everybody around the camp, everybody, all the cities and states around them, 
God was making a point to everybody that, listen, this is my power. This is my might. This is who I am. I am God. I'm taking this 100-year-old man and this 99-year-old woman, and they about to have a child. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they had the child. And so if you wasn't a believer, what? If you wasn't a believer at that time, God was making a statement. Yeah. If you don't know who I am, now here is an example. I am God. I can take a a 100-year-old man and a 99-year-old woman and they can have a child and raise this child. And God let them live long enough to raise Isaac into the fold. That means raise them up to serve God. Yeah. So I'm like, God is amazing. And we need to let the Lord work in our lives so he can show everybody around us who he is. He is almighty. Only the almighty creator can take a a 100-year-old man and a 99-year-old woman and let them produce a child at their a healthy child at their age. Yeah. And just um yeah, just the fact that he can do that, it's a whole bunch of modern day miracles, even aside that of people that just, you know, started off at the bottom and was able to through their work with God and, you know, just networking, they was able to lift their status and, you know, take themselves out of uh a certain situation just yeah. through that situation with God because he brought everything that he needed. You just need to knock on the door and God got everything you need. It's just you got it's the fact that you gotta ask and have patience. And faith. Yep. Ask, have patience and faith and truly believe in him and build that relationship. And and also take the steps you need to take to get to where to meet the Lord where he is. You know? Because if we just going to be stagnant, we just, we just going to ask the Lord for what we want and then sit there and do nothing and be stagnant, what we expect? And I was uh, scrolling through uh, Instagram Reels. It was people who said that. They were talking about some, if you um pray and then you got to do anything after that, that means it was forced. Ain't nothing forced. If you, if you want something, you need to go get it and ask God for the strength to do, do so. Ain't nothing just gonna pop up the next day. That's not how stuff works. You don't. You're not gonna respect nothing doing it like that. If that was how it worked, you you wasn't gonna respect that in the first place. Exactly. You gotta learn for that type of stuff. Exactly. So when you you you're telling me that you you sitting there waiting on God to sit a blessing in your lap, well, you don't even know how to deal with it. If you haven't learned anything along the way, the Lord set things up for you so you can get some experience, learn some things, so that when you're in that position, you're prepared for the blessing. How can you be blessed when you're not even prepared to for any of the blessing? Exactly. You you need to prepare yourself for the blessing. I mean, the Lord has blessed me by taking me through some things so when I get to where I need to be to the blessing I know how to deal with the blessing mm-hmm. and, and just respect it on top of that deal with it and know how to maneuver Amen. because when you get something overnight you ain't gonna know what to do for real exactly. and then you just end up you, you just know? there with, with something you don't know what to do with you yeah. don't you you <laughs> You <laughs> what? Oh, you in trouble? No, 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 ma'am. Not at all. But Trump twenty twenty four. Trump. No, no. no. But God, God again. is gonna prepare us just like He did with Ishmael. Ishmael grew up in the household of um of Abram and then Abraham, but God saw Ishmael's heart. We got to remember Ishmael's mom was not uh, the same faith as um, as Sarah and Abram. Oh, she wasn't? No, she was a, um, she was her servant. She was a, her handmaid. 
So she wasn't born in their um Oh, so she just didn't paper. she didn't um believe in the same God as them? No, she she respected their God because she was in living under their roof. But yeah. she was raised um uh, serving gods from you know, so when her and Ishmael left uh Sarah and Abraham they Sarah and Abraham and went to her people then he he met he even married somebody from a um from another um faith tribe yeah but yeah uh how I feel about the other faiths and stuff you know where where they worship gods I don't even think like those are like gods for the light of course they're not gods but you know, don't you know how like God sent down fallen angels? You know, the ones that had you know went away with Lucifer. Yeah. So I feel like those they worship them, mm. and that's where they got all the um you know five handed you know all that other crazy stuff. And that's in like when you look at the different depictions of it, you will see what I'm talking about. But yeah, that's how I feel about all the other things. That's why I just believe in one God, the Most High. And, you know, God's Trinity. Shout out to the podcast. Amen. And, you know, I just feel like Trump was God sent. <laughs> Forgive him, Jesus. For he know what he know not what he say. But anyway, um, what happened was back then, the, these people would sit down and they would carve out statues. Yeah. And then they would serve them. And they wouldn't, it, it was like, this man would carve up a statue and then another man would carve up a statue and they would name these statues mm -hmm. and then they would bow down to them and they would be praying to these gods and God would see them and God is a jealous God and God didn't mm -hmm. like that he didn't appreciate it. even some of the um some of the um priests would have these gods praying to him. Yeah, and the thing is, that's exactly what Satan was kicked out for, trying to be God. So y'all got to realize what y'all praying to outside of that. Yeah. Because you you could just be praying for your own destruction, for real. That's right. That's right, because even when, um, well, we're not going ahead of the store, we'll get there. Yeah. We got to, um, we got to always remember, we got to remember not to the Lord said, Thou shalt not have any other Praise gods him. before yeah. me. That's the first commandment. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. So that's very important. So that means nothing should come before God. Nothing. And then the Lord yeah. said, Thou shalt not create any image. So we came, you know, that, that, that's a, like you were saying, carving out the statues and then uh, worshiping them. Exactly. And 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 God said we can't even we can't even um, duplicate a tree. We can't we can't even draw a tree and hang it up. We we're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful of what the things we do. When it comes to God and and, and His um, commandments, as well as he, God has some promises for us also, and He say, "But before we get one of those promises, we got to obey His commandments." So if we wondering why life is a mess for us, it's because we need to check those Ten Commandments and see if we following them. We need to check our heart and see if our heart right. If we're not able to forgive, then we need to work on that. If we're not able to love ourselves and our neighbors, then we need to look into our, check into ourselves and see what's going on with us. Yep. You know, we need to be able to uplift and help our neighbors. We need to when somebody in trouble, we need to help them. You know, we need to forgive one another. We need to learn how to forgive ourselves. When we do something wrong, we need to forgive ourselves and we need to ask the Lord to forgive us. And we need to work on moving past this because our all of our goals should be to get to heaven. 
that's what our goals should be to get to heaven to, to live with our creator to be in the presence of our creator you know to to live life without sin that's that should be our goal because this is what the bible is telling us that's what uh that's what we're here for with to to choose to choose well i say um to choose, i i want to like choose to end this off in 30 minutes Oh. It's 30, it's 30 yeah, minutes 30 right minutes now. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's got you. Make sure y'all share. Make sure y'all turn on post notifications. Y'all can be notified whenever we drop new videos. And above all that, make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe. This is Mike signing out. And Grand A.